Hi and welcome to today's episode of On The Money brought to you by Ask Paul. I'm delighted to be joined today by Jamie Heaslip, ex-Irish rugby player. Uh, real pleasure to have you here, Jamie, so thanks very much for taking time out to come see me. I know you're really, really busy. <laughs> well, I pretend I am. Yeah. I pretend I am. Uh, Jamie, so I'll start off, uh, might go, let's go back to rugby if you don't mind. And yeah. I suppose just towards when you're finishing up towards the end of your career, that was an injury. But yeah. When did you get the business mindset, I suppose, in place? Was it how young were you when you started thinking about life after rugby, maybe? Um, it wasn't too long into my career. It was actually about this time 10 years ago, really, when I started thinking about it. I, um, this time 10 years ago, I was lucky enough to go on my first Lions tour. Mm. And I remember being on the Lions tour, kind of thinking, you know, God, you know, I just signed kind of a, a good, one of my, kind of my first proper international contracts before it. And I was kind of going like, you know, you know, this is kind of it, you know what I mean? Like I might get to the next World Cup and that's it because re a study had come out from our players union where it said the average career length was um, six years, in, at that time, six years in Ireland and the UK, seven years, sorry, six years in France, seven years in Ireland and the UK. Right. And at that stage, I was uh, four years into my career. So I was like, oh, right, I'm on, <laughs> that, you know, I'm on borrowed time. So um, <clears throat> I basically started kind of planning then, I suppose, or thinking about what it is I wanted to do um, or where I wanted to go or how I wanted my kind of work-life balance to be post-rugby um, and playing. Um, and that's probably around 2009 is when I started thinking about it. I mean, I was 25 at the time right. um, and just kind of started to begin that journey. Right, okay. And did you have any specific goal in time at that time, or was it more? No, I I had nothing. Um, I really did have have nothing at the time. I was in the middle of doing a master's um, in management in Smurfit Business School, and I was doing that kind of part time. Yeah. Um, I'd done previously. I'd done um, a degree in medical engineering in DCU. So, but I I didn't want to go into engineering, uh, but I like business, but. You know, it's kind of come full circle now because because I had the understanding of of like one of the businesses I got into, for example, was because I had the understanding of medicine, right. uh, biomechanics, biology, um, and maths, and then also having a kind of a business type thinking in mind and strategy. Um, I was able to combine the two. And one of my first actual kind of investments in a startup, but we'll, we'll get we'll get around to that later. Okay. But yeah, no, I basically didn't know where I wanted to go. Right. Um, knew that really to be successful in something you gotta you gotta love it you gotta mm -hmm. be into it and um, so i started with that idea of finding what i liked right really brilliant. brilliant and then that brings us into suppose then after your rugby career and um, you were obviously set up already in a couple of business interests at this yeah. stage obviously made the transi transition much easier for you when um, you say that yeah but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you weren't just stuck day after uh, yeah thinking what I'm well like do. i mean it was funny like transition is, is a really funny one because even though I was planning for things, like I was still, like technically I was, like my contract was running up until, like n now I was preparing for the World Cup, right. you know what I mean? And I had intentions of playing for probably a year or two after the World yeah. Cup, maybe not at international level, I was probably gonna play just club club mm -hmm. rugby. Um, so in my head at the time, like I'm, I'm a year retired now, um, and nearly a year and a half retired, and I was kind of thinking of, you know, if you think about it, three years at that time, yeah. you know, I had three years left of before I had to get into something, which is a long time, uh, yeah. especially when there's all sorts of different things, you know, in play. Um, so the transition was forced upon me, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, I took time out. I looked around. Um, I haven't gotten involved in any of the businesses that I am a shareholder in or invested in, um, purely for the reason it would kind of be the easy thing to do. Right and okay. I don't think I would learn. Yeah. Um, I don't think people would be. I not like you know. I just don't think I would get the real truth as opposed yeah. to if I went somewhere where I'm not invested in, um, and that's kind of what I've done now. Uh, but long term, I would like to be back to kind of owning my own schedule, I suppose, at right, some okay. stage. Rather than having that kind of, not saying nine to five, but back into that kind of work part. Of yeah, yeah, I mean, and it's funny because rugby is rugby's really, really yeah. uh, scheduled. People don't realize, they, they kind of think, I, I used to get a lot of like, oh, what do you do? You know, I play rugby, and they're like, oh, 
you know, what else do you do? And I was like, no, like, <laughs> you know, I'm in, I'm in, like when I was in Leinster, I'd be in the gym for seven o'clock, it would be the first session of the day, and I wouldn't be leaving until about four o'clock in the evening. That's, that's a long day. It's a long this day. This is a normal work day, really, yeah. you know, just a little bit earlier. Um, but then also your whole lifestyle is encompassed in it. So mm -hmm. it teaches a lot about scheduling and, and, and discipline around that. So the nine to five, let's say, lifestyle doesn't really sit bad with me, you know yeah. what I mean? It's just about how you break out that day. Very, very well. And you think then that the transition, although it was not kind of maybe obviously planned, coming from a business, uh, coming from the sporting background you wear with that kind of strict, kind yep. of the, 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 those kind of attributes that you would have picked up, they have to have served you massively when you went into business or when you went into work or whatever you're going to do. Yeah, I think it's, it's really, like, it gives you a sense of, um, like, I, I crave schedule. I, right. I crave structure because that's what I've been used to since I was, like, yeah. 16, 15, 16, 17, you know, when you first kind of come into the system, that's what's kind of laid out for you. And being an engineer as well, that's kind of how my yeah, yeah, brain likes to sort things out um, and kind of tick boxes and just move along. And, you know, that's, that's what you do in rugby and that's how you have to prepare and that's how you get consistency as well. And it, like, you know, it's easy to be, to have a one-off really good game or have a one-off really good season. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like harder to do that over, Consistence. yeah, over, be you know, consistently successful or perform at a good high level. Um, and sometimes, yes, you have to peak and sometimes, you know, you kind of, you bring it down a little bit, but it's, it's what is your kind of, your medium, mm -hmm. you know, and our median, as I say. Um, and that's kind of what it, it, it teaches you, okay, how do you, how do you set up yourself to success, you know, and then you put a lot into the process, you know what I mean? It's all about that process yeah. and, and being disciplined and structured. And I bring that into rugby, I bring that, because rugby is all encompassing when you're professional and, you know, it's a lifestyle thing, that just transitions really well into work life. You know, people talk about work-life balance, you know, yeah. it's, it's just the kind big of word now. yeah i know for me it's just like <laughs> that's just the way you, you know you can not the body you can't separate the body and the mind you, it's you're all in the it's one the you know one. you're yeah, on yeah. the one meat vehicle you know what i mean and it's all connected yeah excellent and would you have any advice jamie for anyone that's maybe starting a career or uh, in, no, in relation to a sporting career yeah. or professional sports what would you not say what you did did, did you do anything wrong what would be a kind of top tip that you give to somebody going through this cycle now if you were maybe uh, late teens or early 20s? Oh, I was going to say play golf or play, <laughs> play soccer, they pay way better, uh, less injuries. Golf, you can play well into your 60s and 70s on the Masters. Yeah, yeah, you're um, doing well. <laughs> so that's the tip, don't pick rugby. <laughs> no, I love rugby, right? Um, and I think actually, you know, I, I, I would love to get back into the business of the sport because it's, okay. a, it's a young, um, sport professionally it's it's only it went professional i think in 96 mm. uh, in ireland not really to 97 98 um, and really in ireland like even i i went professional in 2005 like but it wasn't at the level that it's kind of at now to like oh nine ten in right, my book okay. um but i think it's it's turning the corner there's a lot more stakeholders in the game there's a lot more money coming into the game from broadcasting rights yeah. from tv companies from big tech companies now um sponsors are coming into it again the yeah. game is getting a little bit more it's quite niche still but it's still getting a lot more global and tv as a content provider going forward is going to be one of the few ones that people still all tune in on mass yeah. at the one time yeah you know what i mean and that i i can't see that changing because yeah. you still got to have 15 people in rugby 15 versus 15 people on the field at one time yeah you know what i mean it's not you can't just you can record it but like it's going to get out via social media and news doesn't wait the news cycle isn't 24 hours now, you, yeah. you know what I mean? It, you can't wait a day to get it in the paper or report in the yeah. news, you know. Um, it's all live now, you know, instantaneous information. Um, so sorry, there's a lot more money in the sport. And I think eventually you're starting to see contracts now of guys who are, you know, they're starting to touch on seven figures, right? you know what I mean? Um, and hopefully that average of, will, will come up and up and up for the average player um, and then because there is some players who don't have to necessarily work, let's say, yeah. you know what I mean, in the formal sense, post-playing. But that is, the, that is the top 1%. Yeah, it's very small. Yeah. Very, very small people. And in Ireland, even smaller, because yeah. if you think about it, our actual commercial sponsorship market is very small. It's very small, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? We have a population of what? 
on the island, there's what, five million, five and a half million? Yeah, five and a half million, yeah. Um, you know what I mean? That's Birmingham. Like 66 million over the UK. Yeah, it's, Bar- it's a city. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So our market here commercially is really, really small. And sometimes people forget that a little bit, uh, especially businesses. And that's yeah. why a lot of the businesses actually invested in operate at scale and in different markets rather than very few of them are Irish centric. Yeah. For that reason that you're kind of capped. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? I um, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, very good. Um, and then let's talk about Flander. Uh, yeah. So Flander is your big, so your big kind of uh, ambassador for Flander, and you've uh, been involved in for, for quite some time. Yeah, now. So, yeah, since the start. Uh, yeah, since the very yeah. beginning. Uh, How did you end up there? First of all, if you don't mind me asking. Uh, well, it's the world works in mysterious ways, doesn't it? Um, I've been itching to get into a fintech company for a long time. Right. And for a while, I was looking at things like you know. Um, Currency fair was one, you know right. those kind of those yeah. kind of markets, yeah. the currency exchange. Currency exchange stuff, yeah. Um, and I was seeing what they were doing, and and I was just kind of like, you know, if you look at the big banks, right, they are big le- legacy brands, yeah, right, and they have there's a lot of fat on it, yeah, on all of them. It's a big ship. Yeah, <laughs> and they're really hard. To, they're oil yeah. tankers, man. Yeah, they are. And yeah. they're really hard to turn in a market. Yeah. And if you see in all different uh, sectors across the board, not just banking. Um, you could look at insurance, uh, you could look at retail, yeah. everything's getting disrupted mm-hmm. and particularly the big uh, brands, like legacy brands are getting disrupted in, in a place because they, cause they have so much fat and it's very it's hard very to hard. turn, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, and it's like even, even really privately owned ones, like family owned ones are finding it hard to turn but some of them are making decisions a little bit quicker because they don't have as many stakeholders that they yeah. have to run past so they can they can do merge, mergers and acquisitions a lot quicker, maybe necessarily, but it's 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 tough for them, you know. Mm-hmm. And I feel for them. Um, it's funny. I saw a thing on on I think I saw it on LinkedIn or Instagram or one of them recently, of like the top. It's like the top ten companies over the last like twenty years or something like that. And they grow. It's like a graph. Oh, I seen them go. Yeah, yeah and how they grow. Yeah, yeah, and you just see LinkedIn, all yeah. the tech companies just yeah, coming on yeah, out of nowhere and because knocking people out completely. Because they yeah. just don't have the legacy issues. Yeah. Now, some of them do now. Like, I mean, some of them have you know tens of thousands of staff. You know what I mean? And and I'm sure they will have problems when it comes to other startups yeah. that come into their space. Mm-hmm. But right now, I think like the banking space has been prime. You've seen it as well with N26, with uh, Revolut. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Men- Menzo, uh, Menzo. I can't. I always forget the, the yeah. third one. Um, and they're they're all in that space. Mondo. Mondo. Yeah. They're all in that space, disrupting because they don't have those legacy issues. So, sorry. Long story short, um, I knew one of the founders. Right. Very good. And he came to me, and we started talking about it. Um, and he'd seen what I'd done in that space, where I was. I, I suppose I was leveraging my brand and what I do in that startup SME space because that's where I do mm-hmm. operate in um, and you know trying to help brands come to life you know get into the market yeah. um, bring capital with marketing and then also with their culture and identity and we got chatting about a couple of different things and yeah we decided to kind of partner up and, and go Brilliant. from there and I just really liked the problem they were solving for a lot of SMEs, which so yeah. let's let's take listeners and viewers through that, Jamie. So we're, we're, let's p- pitch Flander, uh, as opposed out here to say where they are in relation to the banks and how quick yeah. and easy it is to do business with them as well. I've done business myself, uh, and it's been amazing. So uh, I suppose what what do you think your the USP is for them um, that you think would interest uh, you know, kind of small businesses? I mean, is it a speed? It's speed. Is it just speed? Like yeah? that's like for me, it's speed. It, yeah. When I look at it and they tell me, and I know this, sorry, I know this from being involved in the, my own companies, you know, where we've had problems where we've gone to the banks and sometimes you go a couple of months and you get a really slow no. Yeah. And that's worse. And it's a torturous no, isn't it? The banks yeah. are notorious. They're just like, it's... It's, it's all destroyed. It, and I don't blame because when you know the inner workings of them, look, they're quite hierarchical yeah. and, and that's just, it's the way that's it's set way up. It is, yeah, yeah. Right? And... But however, you know, you can come to Flender and they can give you the yes in 24 hours. Yeah, it's amazing. You know what I mean? And for whatever about being a big business, you might have the cash flow for that. You might be able to, you know, might have a credit note or something like that where you can go for that. You know, you can go, you can last 60 days or something like that. You know what I mean? But for an SME or a startup company that's looking for money for, for stock or for 
I don't know, for anything they need for equipment or something yeah, like that. Expansion. Yeah, ex yeah, yeah, any yeah, sort of yeah, expansion yeah. And, or an opportunity, you yeah. know, that they, they might have landed a contract that they didn't realize they were yeah. going to get or something like that. Now they've got to go into it and, and activate it. Um, I mean, it's way better to get the answer in 24 hours, I think, than a couple of months. Yeah. Uh, and this is what Flender does. And, uh, and they, you know, they've made the rates very competitive with the banks as well. Um, and I think that's, you know, we're on, they're on a, a, a the same kind of level, I think, anyway. And the rates are good as well. It's like, it's not the rates, the, the, the amount you can borrow between 50 and K and 150, yeah. isn't it? So again, it's a, it's a good kind of range for businesses of all shapes and sizes, really, in that kind yeah, of Yeah, yeah, and look, I, I won't lie, I'll be, I'm, I'm always pushing the team as well to see if can we expand that out, right. you know what Very I mean? Good. Can we lend more, lend you know more, what I mean? Yeah. Make them bigger bands. Yeah, yeah. you know, but um, right now, that, that's, that's what's working. Uh, you know, we're keen to, you know, issue loans and get that money out into the marketplace right. um, and stuff. And on the flip side about like, you know, if you are lending on the platform, yes. you know what I mean? Your return rate as well, yeah. you know, you can get eight to 10 to, you know, 12% on your money versus what, 1% on savings now? It's not even 1%. That's the one thing. The one biggest problem I have with the banks and what's going on at the moment is they're taking money off people. <laughs> it's just like giving, you know, they're just giving zero back. It's, yeah. it's pathetic. And then you put your you know, door down, it's tax and everything. And it's, 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 it's tough, it's you know? Destroyed. You know, it, it's it's tough when you consider like, you know, let's say someone takes a mortgage out and they're taking a mortgage out for what, three, four or five percent, you know, yeah. in Ireland anyway. Yeah. And we're kind of looking at ourselves going, why are we charging that? In Europe, you're not even charging that yeah. rate, you One know. One of my biggest videos actually asked Paul was that I went to Spain and did an interview with a few banks and I was talking about the interest rates. It's yeah. horrendous. Uh, but again, you're right. It's, it's so right. It's, it's, it's mad. But it's legacy money. issues. It is. It's That's the problem, right? The banks are set up in such a way where they... You know, not all their loans are, are, are good. Performing, yeah. You know what I mean? And we've come through, people have a very short memory that they had to, they, they had a lot of bad loans in their book. Mm -hmm. You know, you have people who haven't, you know, haven't been able uh, to pay loans for, you know, three years mm -hmm. on some, some of these loan books. You know what I mean? So um, it's, you know, their business yeah. as well. You yeah, know what I mean? Is, so yeah. you, I, when, you, when you look at it from their side, you can understand why they have to do that, right? Yeah. But then if you're an SME then, and there's another opportunity yeah. where, or it's not an SME, if you're just, you know, Joe Bloggs in the street mm -hmm. and you have money and savings and you want to get a better return rate on it, yeah. You know, this is this is an offer in for it. And take yeah. it that way. Yeah, that's a, it's a really, really good idea. Uh, but I agree with you, I think the, the dealing with Flender as well, as we've my own experience, other people know dealt with Flender, it's been really, it's really encouraging, and that's, I know something about the banks and the hierarchy, but sometimes just soul is trying to go into the banks because the, the chain of command that comes in to get in the call centre and nobody knows what talking about, trying to get an application in yep. to get something to come back to you. It'd be like two or three weeks before anything moves, uh, where 24 hour turnaround yeah. is, is probably the best USP they have, in fairness. Well, it's as well, really I mean, well. There we're probably as well where we don't, you know, you, you think, like take CRM systems even, like, you know what I mean? Like that it's, you're able as a startup to, to, to use what is, you know, the latest and greatest kind yeah. of thing, as opposed to if you're a big legacy brand and you have to tack it on or there's something in place already and how do you replace that yeah. or how do you integrate it? You don't have those kind of issues. And then your other business interests, uh, Jamie, yeah. what, what else have we got going at the moment? We don't um, yeah, uh, so I'm happy to plug whoever, <laughs> you know. Uh, no, I, like a lot of the businesses I've, I, it was actually I had a nice moment because I think I worked it out and the different businesses that I've uh, invested in, I think we're uh, overall, like conservatively, we're up to over 200 employees, like across the, the, the businesses that I'm involved in. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool to know that you're part of yeah, that. Yeah, bigger, yeah, yeah. You know great. what I mean? Um, where you've, you know, 200 people having good jobs. Um, but like the companies that I'm involved in are Kitman Labs is the one I was talking about before. Oh. Um, Tell uh, them the first ones you got involved yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. One, the, the very first one is I, I gave, uh, was Bear restaurant oh, which yeah, is around the corner yeah, and I was in crazy. Bear for about I was in that for about two and a half three years and then I got out of that um, and then Kitman was one my proper first startup investment oh, very, good. Um, very interesting a lot of learning and then I've gone into um, a bit of publishing slash content creation through uh, Love and Media Company um, I got into Pointy which helps a lot of mom-and-pop shops um, kind of get online, I suppose, for want of a better oh, word. Um, and then, like, the pubs, yeah, like, you know, um, the Bridge 1859 and Lemon and Duke, um, all very, you know, small, medium enterprise companies, um, 
all luckily still going. Um, now you know people. People all go, geez, you know they're all flying. I was like, yeah, look, they're going great, but like you know, they're all written off in my book yeah. until like you know you uh, until they sell. You know, and yeah. that's that's well, maybe the pubs could be a little bit different, but the tech companies, for example, yeah. you know, it's either really you know you can stay private, you know, and pay out dividends, but they, you got to wait a while before they get to that stage. I think um, you get acquired or your or your IPO, and they're all very. Three long options, you know. Yeah, they are very long options. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So everything you mentioned there, talk to me about the work-life balance. If you don't mind, because yeah, I think most yeah. people, it's like I said, a buzzword. Oh, I'm a big advocate of so it. Yeah. So the one-year-old, you've got the obviously the, she Harper, is it? Harper's yeah, her name. Yeah. yeah. So Harper yeah. And just started a crash. Yeah. Right, very good. Excellent. Yeah. And obviously with all these businesses, and then your full-time uh, role now in yeah. Google. Yeah. How's that going? Enjoying it. So the which which part now? The being a dad, <laughs> which like you threw a lot at yeah, me sorry. there. Oh no, no. <laughs> the, the, oh, that's how it's being a dad. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. It's great. It's great. Look, there's a lot of change, obviously, and I was actually I was literally having this conversation at lunch today with someone, and they were like, you know, you you you, you don't have like the dad bod, right? That oh, a lot okay. of guys go on about. And I was like, yeah, but like you know, it's all about priorities in your life. You know what okay. I mean? Where do you want to spend your priorities? Where do you want to spend your time? Where do you want to invest your time? Like business, where do you want to invest your yeah. money, right? And get, where do you want to get your return? So like, you know, I kind of base my life on kind of four pillars, you know, it's kind of mind, body, relationships, career. Okay. Okay. That, that's, it, you, I used to have it in five rings, like the Olympic rings when I yeah. did sport. So, but recently I've kind of been going on four kind of pillars that I kind of are my foundation stones. Okay. And I just make sure every week that I'm kind of getting, or every, even every day, trying to get balance in all four of them. You know, relationships is very broad, obviously, yeah. but you can boil that down into basically family, family and friends yeah. is, is kind of how I look at it. Family come first for me. So my wife, my child, and making sure that I get time with both of them together. We get fam time as a family. I get time with my daughter. I get time with my wife and vice versa yeah. and all that. Um, and then so the time of myself, I always put priority on like training, staying fit, yeah. because I've seen the benefits of of having a healthy body and a healthy mind. Yeah. Like you can't, they're not separate. It's the same thing. To have a healthy mind, you need to have a healthy body. Yeah. Like chemically, it has a massive effect on how your brain operates, you know? Um, and it's, it's a big passion of mine. It's something I'm looking at seeing where I can get into in that mm -hmm. whole wellness space, I suppose, for want of a better word. Um, but it's, it's very important to me. Like, and I structure my day out to make sure that, you know, Seven out of the seven days of the week, I'm training five or six days of those a week. Right, very good. Um, making sure I'm getting enough sleep. So then back to that structure thing, as opposed yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. Old habits die yeah. hard, man. <laughs> I track a lot of stuff as well, still. Um, Do you really, yeah? Track my sleep, track my blood sugar, track my weight, track what I'm lifting in training, um, my activity levels, and you yeah, know, so wouldn't you? it's only be in the worst since you stopped? Yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what doesn't get measured doesn't get managed, you know right, what I mean? So I just kind of stay on top of it. Um, yeah, you know, keep myself accountable. If if anything, just for myself. Right, excellent. Um, and Jimmy, now obviously it's a the show is called on the money. So let's yeah. get into a little bit of money talk. So, what is your best investment decision you've ever made? If you want me asking. Oh, a, a fin <laughs> we're talking obviously financially. Uh, investments. So let's let's say let's say financially first. Yeah. Um, Actually, sorry, you want me asking? What were you going to say? If it wasn't well, like, I mean, so like, what's the best investment I mean, in your mind? You never hear someone on their deathbed going, oh, I wish I spent that money. Or yeah, 100%. I, money there. I mean, it's very, you know, it's, it's time and friends. It's like, I actually read a really good book and it's a really short read called Happy Money. Okay. And, you know, a lot of the, he gives a lot of tips on like how to spend your money to get actual happiness and they try okay. and measure happiness. Very good. Um, and a lot of it is like, you know, on experiences, yeah. and experiences with friends. Also, a lot of it is like kind of basically outsourcing stuff that you don't necessarily want to do or you're able to outsource. So if you're able to outsource your house cleaning or yes. your ironing yes. or something like that, you know, something that gives you your time back yeah. um, totally is that. a really good investment. Um, uh, gifting um, and kind of random gifts to people as well and experiences, basically. Yeah, experiences. Um, but financially, right. sorry, financially, uh, I would probably say my pension. Okay. I started my pension at 21. Well, very good. Um, 
and I was able for a good few years to be able to max it out over the years yeah, as well. Yeah, especially as a sports person with yeah. the Leafs, yeah, it's um, great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, my understanding is that, you know, as a sportsman, you're, uh, you're able to get access to it uh, a little bit earlier. Yeah, indeed, um, yeah. To, For a percentage of it to come back. back yeah, you get your retirement on it, yeah. Yeah, um, and that's, that's why I do it. And also, when you see the compound interest effect, especially when you do yeah. it so early. Tax relief. <laughs> yeah, 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 but do, when you do yeah, it so early. Yeah, do it so early, it's amazing, yeah. You know what I mean? So a lot of people are only coming around to pensions. To, I'm talking to people now, they're only starting their pensions now. Yeah. In their mid thirties, yeah. and I'm like kind of going, oh god, for you to get to where I am now, that's that's a big a chunk, lot of big chunk. change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you starting know. the younger, the younger can start the pension. Uh, yeah, the better compound. Yeah, it's one of the best amazing. things my dad ever. Like my dad, my, it's ironic because my dad never had to worry about his pension because he w- was in the army. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> he's got to stay pension. <laughs> got to stay pension. Um, <laughs> but he, you know, one of the first things he like literally, man, I'd say. You know, I started professionally, I think it was in June, and like, yeah, just but that in. first wage, that really? first pay slip. And I that was the it. next question I was going to ask you for growing up was money in the house? Did you, we encouraged to save from a young age, like post off credit, but you had to answer that really. The best probably advice. Yeah, you like we were, we were from a, like, we're, we're from like middle income household. Like, yeah. I'm from a middle income household. Um, you know, my parents lived in a, in an estate, in Ace, still yeah. do. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, my dad uh, worked a tough job, you know, went abroad, um, like took postings abroad, obviously to, to make that a little bit more money for us. Um, everyone went to public, uh, private, uh, public school except for me, um, and my siblings helped out with me going to private school. Um, you know, so we, money, you know, we were never stuck for it, yeah. but we, it wasn't we like we, it, yeah, yeah we, they worked for it, you yeah. know, and um, yeah, so like, if, if money if like Just pass that on we were always generation. told like to kind of work for it you know i had jobs since i was like 14 15. Right. i had dinner with a buddy last week and i remember two of us remember when we were like 14 15 16 during the summers going around offering people to wash their cars and stuff right. trying to hustle for a bit of cash yeah. or do the gardening yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. um some of that might have not be- got declared at the time <laughs> <laughs> um, cut that bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't think they're coming after me for 100 euro yeah. back in 2001 pounds. Like, <laughs> the pounds <laughs> yeah, whatever it was yeah. no it was in school so you're right yeah, it yeah. was pounds back then it was in the 90s um <laughs> but no like it's it's working hard for your money yeah. um is is probably what I, I I was I was taught and and to try and think you know get cover the basics like you know cover your health cover your long term kind of vision and and have a bit of security very very good so Jamie what's the worst investment decision you ever made I mean stick to it maybe financially for this one worst I bought an apartment in 06 and a house in 08 <laughs> that's <laughs> the <easy over. laughs> uh, Okay, saving yeah, grace is that, timing, yeah. yeah, saving grace is that they were on a tracker. Um, oh, yeah, great. But, Kept um, my life. God, God knows the amount of crap that I bought over the years. Yeah, I was about to say, because after reading that book, you've seen that that book is taking it over, so happy money. So, yeah. have you wasted, not, not get too personally, but now at the age you are having a baby, have you noticed that you've just kind of oh, man, like a lot of weight? Like, like, yeah. Experience has probably been great, but experience is. What's your on the experience waste of money? size, no. But like when you're when you're playing rugby, right? You got to understand you're 21. You're making more ma- money than your parents, yeah. right? You're living on your own in a house or an apartment. Like, what else are you gonna do? <laughs> like, you know, you're not thinking long term. You're not thinking. No, well, you're not. You know, at that stage. So when I when I mean at that stage, I probably bought like silly amount of clothes or Cars. you know. I probably got the. Uh, no, I know. Right. Like a, a lot of, I was a tech geek for a while. A lot of right, gadgety okay. kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And it's only when you move house or move apartment that you you realize like, oh my god, look at all this crap that I bought. Um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I never, I never. Like sometimes people probably thought I I might have spent too much on experiences. Like right, you know okay. what I mean? Well, when we played and stuff. But I would, I'd argue, going to go and like. You know, experiences are going to last you a lifetime. Yeah, hundred percent. Totally agree. You know that. what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I, I, especially, you know, when you play rugby, you get a four-week window. They actually get less now. They get a three-week window, and then they have to go back and train for two weeks, and then they get another two-week window. But like, we used to get a four-week window and a block, and I'd be like, a, I'd spend, I'd say, out of out of four weeks, out of twenty-eight days, I'd say I'm lucky in the country for twenty-five days. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, no, I'm gone. gone. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm going to enjoy my time. Brilliant. And yeah. you know. 
have Excellent. a bit of crack. Excellent, very good. Uh, Jamie, what's the future hold? Uh, <sighs> That's a good question. Yeah, what would you like it to hold? What's <laughs> the, what is this? So you mentioned companies going IPO. I'd love to be like, retired at 40. Yeah. Would you really? Now what's retired to you? Is retired not having the kind of... Retired not worry, having to worry about, about money. Essentially, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. That yeah. you have some sort of revenue income stream that's steady enough that covers everything. So passive income coming yeah. in. Yeah. Covers everything and then you still have a couple of things that you're in the mix. Yeah. You're still busy. Still busy. You're not sitting on a beach, but yeah, you're yeah. still, yeah. Um, that would be the ideal scenario or well, lifestyle that I'd want to create and trying to get to that lifestyle is that's that's right. the, that's the trick that's what i'm trying to figure out but okay yeah sounds like you've paved the way anyway uh, you're on the seems to be on the right track with all the business interest and everything that's gone well, on well so you know i'd love for a couple of the bets come in yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> they're not yeah. um and a couple of things but like yeah it, I, I where i want to get to is where i have a lifestyle that i i you know that gives me the balance that i want right. you know what yeah. i mean and i'm not too like i always said finishing rugby that um I wanted a house that I never thought I would have, uh, a family home, and that was pretty much paid off. Right. Um, that's the goal, if I'm okay. honest, because once you do that, that's your biggest debt you're ever going to have in yeah, your life. Is, yeah. um, and obviously, it's better to pay it down earlier than longer. Um, you can save yourself a lot of money. Yeah, interest. Um, so that's the goal, nearly there. And if I get that point, then that other lifestyle is not too far away. So, okay, yeah. you know, it's set the goal. Work Measures. back. What are what are the, what are the steps to get there? And for a lot of people, your mortgage is is probably the big one that yeah. you can you can shift. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, Jamie, listen, it's been great having you here today. I really appreciate your time. No You're worries. Extremely busy. I uh, had to stick up for the rugby guys. I know you had yeah. Bernard Brogan in here, like, so I had to give the rugby contingent <laughs> yeah. some love. Yeah, affairs. A lot of it. Very similar. The interview with Bernard uh, from what I had Bernard in before. Yeah. Uh, you know, in relation to the structure and the the four, yeah. the four yeah. pillars you have, and the, you know, very very similar. So uh, obviously, from a professional sports point of view. Well, they're pretty much but, professional uh, yeah, without yeah. being professional. Yeah, they are without being professional. But, uh, yeah. It is insane. That's a that's a whole different video. Might do that one in the back. With <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Bernard, tell me what you really think. Yeah, what do you really think? Yeah. Excellent. Listen, thanks very yeah, much. Yeah, no worries. Pleasure. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Paul. Thank Cheers. Cheers. Uh, and that wraps up today's interview with Jamie Heaslip. Again, thanks for coming in, Jamie. Uh, as always, any questions, pop them to questions at askpaul.ie uh, or send me a PM or DM on any of the social media channels. Channels. Thank you.